Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be talking about histograms. We're gonna go through the different aspects of a histogram and we'll go through some examples. So let's get started. Now a histogram is another way of showing data. It's another way of organizing data. Now I'm actually gonna pull up an example of a histogram and we're gonna actually work through the different aspects of a histogram together. So this is actually a histogram and I'm gonna write on this screen to kind of show you uh, what's going on here. So this looks a lot like a bar graph but it actually is quite different from a bar graph even though it looks like it. So first off, this uh, variable right here is a numerical variable. It's represented by the score on a final exam. So keep in mind that histograms are meant for only organizing numerical variables. They are not meant for organizing categorical variables. So this is something that a lot of people get wrong. A lot of people think that these are bar graphs, but they're not. Bar graphs are meant for categorical data. So when you have different categories like apples, oranges, red, glue, blue, green, you know, this is an example of something that is numerical. And so the bars mean a little bit different. They're not supposed, to, in a sense, there is a closeness to these bars, which leads me to my next point about, um, here, hold on, let me see if I can find a racer. There we go. About the uh, histograms and how they differentiate from bar graphs. Notice how these bars are actually touching. That is actually important. The reason is because there is a closeness um, involved with these different, what are called bins. These are all, I'm gonna refer to these as bins. There are five bins in total. Now, the idea is these bins are close together. In a sense, this bin right here is close to this bin. And so in a sense, that's why we have them touching. This is what differentiates histograms from bar graphs again. Bar graphs are actually represented as bars that are separated from each other. There's like a little gap between the bars. And the reason for that is because there's no sense of closeness when it comes to categorical variables. So uh, these are called bins. And we notice that each bin is actually exactly the same in size. Each bin is size 20 in this case. So we would call that uh, the bin width is 20. Now, the height of the bars work a lot like bar graphs. The height of the bars represent um, how many observations were observed in between those two numbers, 40 and 60, or 60 and 80, or 80 and 100. So, for example, if my data had a number, let's say 78, which of these bars would represent that number? Well, it would be specifically this one right here because this one is between 60 and 80 right there. Let me draw that a little better. 60 and 80. 78 is between 60 and 80, so it would it would be represented in this bar. And again, the height of this bar of this bar uh, is represented by the a frequency or the in this case the number of students. And if you remember frequency is uh, the number of observations uh, uh, that is seen for one particular data point. In this case, we're talking about a frequency of a range of numbers, so between 60 and 80. Now, a really good question that I get every once in a while from my students is, what about these numbers in between bars? So, for example, what if we have the number 80? Which bar does that go to? Does it go to this bar or does it go to that bar because keep in mind 80 is right in between those two bars and the answer is always the right bar that's how histograms work at least so 80 would be represented by that bar right there this one right here this blue one so just keep in mind that is actually really important when we are organizing our data so this is a histogram, and I want to go through one more example with you guys so that you get a better understanding of how to draw a histogram. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. Sometimes, by the way, they'll use the phrase class width. That's the same as, the, uh, as bin width. Uh, it is, I don't know if I mentioned this, it is important that bin widths are the same size. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that. Okay, let me, let me go through one more 
uh, example here. In this case, we're actually going to develop a histogram together. So let's say we have some data of some ages. Um, we have a two-year-old, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a seven-year-old, a six-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, six-year-old, five-year-old, four-year-old, and eight-year-old. So let's say we wanted to organize this data with a histogram. Well, in order to do that, first we need to draw our horizontal variable. That's what I would start with every single time. Now, we're going to start with the number two because that's the lowest, although you can start with whatever you want. And then we'll go, let's do by twos. So we'll go to two, then four, then six, and then eight, and then 10. Alrighty, so let's talk of, about the height of this. So I think the highest in this category will probably be my sixes and sevens, which is one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. I think that's as high as we go. We'll see though. Yeah, that looks like as high as we go. Now let's talk about this first category right here. This for, first bin, I should say, not category. Uh, category would be more uh, appropriate for bar graphs. So let's uh, let's see about this first category, first bin, excuse me. What numbers would go in here amongst these numbers here? Well, the answer for that is twos and threes, but not fours. Fours would be represented in that bar right there. So how many twos and threes do we have? We have one, two, three. We have three in total. So the height of this bar would be exactly three. And technically, you don't even need to label your y-axis in this case because if you're telling that you, it's a histogram, it's already clear that this represents frequency. Like that is technically already assumed. Most people do. And then people would also label this as something like age, which is a numerical variable. What about from four to six? Technically, it's from four to like 5.99999 and so on. So how many of those do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. This will go up to five. And then from six to eight, which are really in this case, just my sixes and sevens. So one, two, three, four, five, also five. And then eights, nines, and not tens, because tens don't, tens would go into the next bin. Uh, it looks like we only have one eight. So it'd be something like this. So this is an example of a histogram and how to develop a histogram. Uh, I hope this example helps, and I'll see you guys in the next lecture.